Okay, so in the first part of today's lecture, I defined what an eigenvector is and an eigenvalue. And now we want to kind of get used to uh, checking whether you have an eigenvector or finding these values. So we're going to first start with just checking whether something is an eigenvector or not. So according to the definition, we will have an eigenvector. If I multiply the matrix A by that vector, I just get a scalar multiple of the thing that I start with. So it's quite easy to check whether something is an eigenvector. I just look at the matrix that I'm starting with, studying. I'm going to multiply it by the vector that I want to check to see is an eigenvector. So I just do the matrix multiplication by the vector. So let's see, I get minus 1, minus 2. So I get minus 3 here. And then here I get 6. And then you have to sit back and stare and say, well, did the vector I end up with is that going to be a scalar multiple, the vector I started with? And you see that in this case, yes, that is true. Because the vector I ended up with is minus 3 times the first vector. So we're actually getting a little bit more information here is that lambda equals negative 3 is the associated eigenvalue. So yes, this is an eigenvector. And this is how you check whether something's an eigenvector. Just multiply it by the matrix and see if you get a scalar multiple of something. OK, so now what we want to do is to check whether something is an eigenvalue of a matrix. OK, so if somebody is claiming that lambda equals 3 is an eigenvalue of this matrix. And then what it's saying, OK, can you first show that this is an eigenvalue? And then you have to find the eigenvector that goes with this. Now, according to the definition, if lambda is going to be an eigenvalue, that means we can find some x so that when I multiply a by x, I get some scaling factor. I would It's the same as scaling the vector x by the constant. And they're telling us what the constant is in this case. It's 3. So we want this to be true. Right? So we want to show that this has a non-trivial solution. And let's think about what's going on over here. Well, we want ax to be equal to 3 times x. Now, at first glance, it looks a little weird, right? Because on this side, I have a matrix times a vector. And on this side, I have a scalar times a, a vector. So I it would be easier if I could have both matrices, if I could have matrices on both sides times x. And you can do that. You can do a little trick here, noticing that I can have a matrix times x. And it's the same thing as 3 times the identity of size 2 times x, right? So this is the identity matrix of size 2. So if you scaling a vector by 3, it's the same thing as first scaling the identity matrix by 3 and then multiplying it by x. OK, so this is good because now I have a matrix times x on both sides. So I can re rearrange this equation so that I have ax minus 3i2 x equals to the 0 vector. And the advantage of now writing both of these terms here as matrices is that I can now factor out the x, the vector x, and end up with 3i2 x equals to 0. So what we need to do, we want to show that this guy has a non-trivial solution. So we need to show that this system here has a non-trivial solution. But this is just a matrix. A minus 3 times the identity matrix is a matrix. So let me rewrite this so it's clear in your notes what we need to do. So we need to show A minus 3 times the identity matrix times x equals uh, to 0 has a non trivial solution. So we're turning our original question into a question about checking whether a homogeneous system of equations has a non-trivial solution. And so we know how to do that. So first of all, let me show you what a minus 3i2 is. Well, you take your matrix A, which was 2, 2, 2, minus 1. And now we're subtracting 3, 0, 0, 3, and I get a new matrix, which is now negative 1, 2, 2, minus 1, minus 3, which is minus 4. 
So we want to know, does this system here with this matrix have a non-trivial solution, right? So that we can set up the augmented matrix. So we have minus 1, 2, 0, 2, minus 4, 0. And then this is row equivalent to 1, minus 2, 0. And then we have 0, 0, 0. And we actually see that x2 is free, so we get a non-trivial solution. So non-trivial solution exists. Okay, so in some ways we've answered the first part of the question. Is 3 an eigenvalue? Yes, it is an eigenvalue because there's going to be a non-trivial, there's going to be a non-trivial solution to this matrix, which means that there's a non-trivial solution to this part right here, and then there's a non-trivial solution to that part right here. And in fact, we can go a little bit further here and actually figure out what all the solutions are. Right? So let's go further. We know that x2 is free. right? So then this means that x1 is equal to 2 times x2. So this means then that all solutions have the form, and let me just move up here so I have a little bit more room to finish up. So all the solutions will have the form x1, x2 is equal to 2x2, x2, and let's just factor out the free variable. I get x2, 2, 1, right, with x2 being any sort of real number. So as long as this number is not zero, so if x2 does not equal to zero, then x2 times 2 times 1 is an eigenvector. So in particular, so the uh, 2, 1, i.e. take x equal to x2 equal to 1 is an eigenvector of lambda equals to 3. Okay? And so what there's one thing you want to notice here is that once you know the eigenvalue, there's actually not just going to be normally one eigenvector, there's actually an infinite number of eigenvectors associated with that eigenvalue. And also I want to point out that you actually have enough information to check your answer because we're claiming that 2, 1 is an eigenvalue corresponding to 3. So all you do is take your original matrix, 2, 2, minus 1, and you multiply it by what you think is the eigenvector, and you multiply it out. So here I see I get a 4, I get 6, and I get a 4 minus 1, 3. And then you ask yourself, is this 3 times your original vector? And it is. 6 times 3 is 3 times my original vector. So everything is good. I'm going to give myself a happy face for getting it right. So you can check your answer. Whether You can find the eigenvector uh, if you know the eigenvalue, and then you can check your uh, answer. So this gives you a little bit more of an example, uh, an example, a worked out example. And in the next part, we're going to talk a bit about kind of just generalizing this approach for finding uh, other eigenvalues and eigenvectors. And we're going to tie it to the language of vector spaces and subspaces that we learned in chapter four.